In this module, we'll talk about molecules that help enzyme. These molecules may or may not be attached to the enzymes. We can categorize them in three different groups. Cofactors, these for ex examples of cofactors are iron, that facilitates oxidation reduction reactions when it is attached to an enzyme. Copper, it also facilitates oxidation and reduction reaction. Zinc, it helps a type of protein, an enzyme protein, NAD. Coenzymes, the examples are biotin, carries the carboxyl group. Coenzyme A, NAD, FAD, and ATP. ATP is also can also be considered a coenzyme for different enzymes. Prosthetic groups. Examples of prosthetic groups is heme. It binds iron oxygen, for example, which we have this in our red blood cells, and it can also carry electrons. Flavin and retinal are also examples of prosthetic groups. Retinal, I would like to mention, can convert light energy. This is a type of prosthetic group that allows us to see. So, what is the difference? What are these different categories? Cofactors are basically inorganic ions. For example, we, we talked about copper, zinc, and iron. They are bound to some enzymes and are there, they are essential for their function. Coenzymes are carbon containing molecules. They bind, they bind enzymes temporarily. Chemically, these coenzymes, however, they, they are changed during the course of a reaction. Enzymes do not change chemically before and after the, the reaction, the enzyme structure stays the same. However, during the chemical reaction, the enzyme may go through some temporary uh, reorganization, some, some slight chemical change, but it will revert back to its original condition after the reaction. Prosthetic groups, these are non-protein components permanently bound to enzymes. Heme is an example. See the structure of heme on the screen also. Without its prosthetic group, the protein is the apoprotein, whereas when the prosthetic group is attached to the enzyme, it's called the holoprotein. We are going to look at, we have already looked at the mechanisms of enzymes. Now we are going to look at uh, how enzymes can be regulated because we do not want our enzymes to be on all the time. There's, there are instances where we require our enzymes to be active and then there are instances that we require when we require our enzymes to be inactive. So how do we activate or inactivate our enzymes? We look at that in our next module.